Are you young? Are you in your you know teens and 20s and you want to set yourself up for success? Well, today we're going to be talking about how you can make changes today that will have a huge impact on your life as you get older. Look at it kind of like this. Let's say that you're trying to push a thousand pound ball from a stop, right? That ball is going to be really hard to move. But if you have a hundred pound ball next to it, it's going to be so much easier to move. That's you. You're the 100 pound ball. You can actually push that and you can get it rolling versus that 1000 pound ball is gonna be really hard and that's you know you when you're 60. So let's get you started on the right path today, get your habits in place, and you will see a big impact on your life as you grow older. So let's get started. Number one, really focus on your credit. I want you to be paying attention. I want you to look online. I want you to keep track of where your credit score is. If you're under 18, I want you to have your parents, if they have good credit, to add you as a co-signer on a card. If you are an authorized signer on the card, then you are A-OK, -okay. your parents will pay the bill, they never even have to have any, have you actually make any purchases, but you're on that card and that will start showing up on your credit. If you're 18, go get a credit card. That's the first way to start, get a credit card. You may have to start with a, with a secured credit card, essentially that means you put money up front and then you can use that money to, to borrow against essentially your own money. And then that's showing that you're making payments. So make the payments on time. Never ever miss a payment. Whenever your payment is due, make sure you pay it early. Set up an auto pay. Whenever you're young, essentially it's kind of like the analogy I made in the intro of a thousand pounds versus a hundred pound ball as you're trying to move. Your credit will move really quickly, especially when you're young. So put all really good stuff on it. Your credit's gonna skyrocket. And as you get older, you get into your thirties, you can start using that credit to really leveraging your wealth to push it to the next level so by the time you hit 50, you are set, you have leveraged your wealth, you've paid a lot of stuff off, and then you can ride off into the sunset and do whatever you want. Number two, understand that your risk tolerance is higher. When you're younger, your risk tolerance for especially financial stuff should be higher. Why is that? Well, if you screw something up, it's not the end of the world. You've got time to make it up. You know, if you're 25 years old and something messes up, whatever, you just start all over. Whereas if you're 60 years old, you may not have time because you may have spent, you know, five years, 10 years doing something and now you're in your 70s. So understand that you have time to make that, that risky decision. So let's say you want to start a business. Start it young. Start it whenever you're young. You can start older. That's OK, too. But if you're young, you have the ability to start that business. And if you screw it up, it's not the end of the world. You just keep on rolling and then you maybe start another business or if, you know, having your own business isn't your thing, maybe you go work for somebody else. But start with somebody small. Just go work for a startup. That's very risky because a lot of businesses fail. It's really hard for a new business to get going. But if you're young, you go work for them, maybe the business has a one to five chance of actually surviving. Well, you will learn a lot. I guarantee you, because you will see every aspect of the business if you're working for somebody small. I know for me, I can't work for a big company. It's not my jam. I want to see how the business runs. I want to be involved in different aspects of the business. Whereas if you go work for a huge company, you know, they give you this one little job and you're stuck in this little tiny bubble. You may learn this one thing really well, but you're not really growing as a person. So understand that you can take those risks. And it's a great idea to take those risks when you're young. Number three, don't underestimate the power of books. You probably heard the saying, there's nothing new under the sun. Well, that's true. You know, humans have been around for thousands of years and we've had billions of people, and you're probably, whatever you're experiencing, someone else has experienced something very similar. So the reason you want to read is you want to understand what other people have had, what they, what's happened to them. This is why it's so important to have history. You have to understand the history of the world to know how we got here, to know the screw-ups along the way, so we don't make those same mistakes again. You're probably not running a country, but you can most certainly take that basic principle and apply it to your life. Read what other people, especially in your industry and your career have done and how you can take what they've done, what they screwed up with and not do the same mistakes twice. One of my favorite books is uh, Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. This came out around the time he died. He was interviewed, Steve Jobs was interviewed but right before he died. This is a really good one and biographies in general. You can really see, I mean, Steve Jobs was enormously successful but he screwed up along the way and you can see where his screw ups were and whenever you run into a similar situation, you'll recall what you read in the book and then you don't do it again. Another one is gonna be self-help books. Self-help books are great. Um, some of them are cliche, so make sure you find the good ones. 
but self-help books can really put you on the right path and help you get going. Um, one of my favorites is The One Thing by Gary Keller. This really focuses on, focuses you on one thing that you're good at. You have to read the book for it to make more sense, but you know, make sure that you're really focusing on what you're doing and then you'll see big results in your career, in your business, whatever you're doing. Uh, if you like business, I love Jim Collins, uh, Good to Great, uh, Built to Last. Those are great books as well. There's a lot of really good books out there. So make sure you're reading those, expanding your mind. If Your mind's a muscle. If you're not using it, you're gonna lose it. So make sure you're expanding that and taking everything in that you can. Now, if you're not really in a position where you can sit down and read a lot, or maybe you're not a super fast reader, that's okay. Use audiobooks. And here's the little trick with audiobooks. You can actually speed up to almost double usually, or maybe even more, depending. And you can listen to the book a lot faster because your mind can process faster than other people can speak. So keep that in mind if you're driving a lot, don't just listen to the radio. Take that opportunity to grow your mind, to grow your experience, and hear what other people have had in the past. Number four, take the time to learn as much as you can to experience as much as you can. You're young. There is a lot of experiences out there in the world. Make sure that you're trying to grow and learn. So let's say you're in college. There may be an awesome unpaid internship. You may be like, I don't wanna go do work for free. But just think what that really could mean. What could that mean at the end of the day? If you take this internship and you spend a semester, you may not make a whole lot of money, but what you learn could turn into a new business for you. It could turn into a different career. You may meet somebody that works there or is another company that's related to that one and they offer you a job, but you would have never had that if you hadn't taken that opportunity. Or let's say that you, you know, you start off like we talked about in the beginning, maybe you take a job at a small startup. They don't have as much money to pay you. It can actually be really valuable because it's the same thing. You're gonna learn a lot of people, you're gonna learn about the industry that you're in. Yes, you could go work at Amazon. Their minimum wage is $15 an hour, but what are you really gonna learn about, you know, sticking goods in a box and packing it and shipping it off to somebody? We can go work for somebody else, maybe for $12 an hour and get a wealth of experience. So take advantage of the time that you have. When you're young, you don't have as many expenses. Take the time to really learn, to be a sponge. Soak everything in that you can and you won't regret it when you're older. Number five, build financial habits that will impact you in the future. I can tell you this, I'm in my early 30s. It's a whole lot easier when you're young to set habits than when you're older. So as you get older, you become set in your ways. It's just like the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's how it works. It's the truth. And it's true for humans. It becomes a lot more difficult. So set those financial habits today that really make a difference. Save money. Don't go out and spend money frivolously. You got a good paycheck. Great. Save most of it. You know, you go have some fun with it. You don't need to go on a date night and spend $200 every week. There's no point. Yes, it might be fun for your date, but is that really important? Take that money, save that money, go out. You can go have a nice dinner, go walk around the park, maybe go to a matinee show. You're in and out for 50 bucks. You just saved yourself $150. Keep that in mind that the money that you save today will grow exponentially. Especially if you invest it right, that will be a ton more money in the future. But if you wait 20, 30 years before you start doing it, you no longer have the time before your time is up to really grow that money. So set those habits today, it'll be easier to maintain and you'll also see the financial benefit in your net worth as you get older. So I hope that these have been helpful. These are some simple tips, but they're also very impactful, especially if you're young. Here's your action item for the day. I want you to go online and I want you to set up a free online savings account. They shouldn't cost you anything. There's several options online. I want you to go set them up and I want you to set up a reoccurring transfer from where you bank, where your payroll is coming in, to this account. Now, if you don't have a job or not a steady income, you may not be able to do this. But if you're out of college or maybe you're in college and you're working part-time, I want you to set this up. Let's say $500 a month. That may be pushing you. I want it to be slightly uncomfortable, but I don't want it to be so uncomfortable that you're having to pull out of the savings all the time. Take that, take that money, set it up. $500 a month, you're paid every two weeks. Set up $250 for a couple days after your payroll comes through. Set that up and have it move over, and then have it move over. Keep on having that money move over. You'll be surprised how quickly it grows, but you forget about it, because when you check your bank account, it's not there, because it's in this other bank account. And then you go check it once a month, you're like, whoa, how did all this money get in here? And then once you get comfortable with that, maybe you take a little more, take a little more, and use this money to invest in yourself. Invest in your future. Start a business with this. Buy an investment house. Buy stocks and bonds if that's your jam. 
I want you to use this for your future. This is your investment money. So if you've enjoyed this video, take a second to like, subscribe, comment, share. We would love to hear from you. If you comment below, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Or if you have another idea for a future video, let us know. I am Brian Mullins, and I hope that you have a good day.